Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Dominate Your Market, People, Processes, and Practices. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. And for anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, and we're best known for our search engine optimization, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning websites. DealerOn was named the top-rated website provider by driving sales in 2012 and 2013, and DealerOn customers were winners of the Spring and Fall 2012 Digital Dealer Website Excellence Awards, including the highly coveted overall winner. And recently at NADA, DealerOn also received the Best in Show Award for website design from Dealer Marketing Magazine. DealerOn is so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we're the only company in the industry to offer a money-back lead guarantee program. So does your website company guarantee you leads? Well, then maybe you should check us out at DealerOn.com. And we have a great show in store for you today. We are so pleased to have Grant Cardone as our presenter today. Grant Cardone is a pioneer in the automotive industry, introducing non-confrontation selling in the 90s. He then introduced information-assisted selling at the turn of the century. In 2001, he was first to market with electronic desking, uh, providing menus for the sales process. His companies have worked with almost every manufacturer and was just signed by Nissan, Infiniti, and Chrysler for customer experience and sales process assessments. Cardone is regularly seen on Fox, Fox Business, NBC, MSNBC, and CNBC. He is a writer for Business Insider, Huffington Post, and Entrepreneur Magazine. Grant is also the executive producer and star of TV's Turnaround King. And he has his own radio show, The Cardone Zone, at WDBO in Orlando. He's also a New York Times best-selling author with four books, Sell or Be Sold, The Closer's Survival Guide, If You're Not First, You're Last, and The 10X Rule. Grant has most recently built cloud-based interactive online sales training platforms for automotive at CardoneOnDemand.com. And you can follow one of the top 10 business coaches and number one sales expert for 2012 on Twitter at Grant Cardone or check him out at GrantCardone.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of the webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference, and please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our great friends at Cardone Enterprises are giving away some fantastic prizes today on the webinar. First, one lucky attendee is going to win the free, well, they're going to win it for free, the Close the Sale app for their entire dealership. That's right. Their Close the Sale app, if you don't have it, you are missing out. It is amazing. It is like number two on iTunes. You've got to get this thing. It, and you have to be on the live broadcast to win, I'm going to say. So all you have to do is stay tuned for the details after Grant's formal presentation, and you might be winning the Close the Sale app for your entire dealership. But not to be outdone, secondly, everyone on this live broadcast right now is going to receive a very special offer. Grant is going to be waiving all the activation fees and year two for free to his Cardone on-demand training and sales solution platform. That's everyone on this call right now. Everyone is already a winner. All you have to do is call Grant's office at 310-777. 0255, write that number down, call them within three hours of the conclusion of this webinar and you're going to receive a waiving of all activation fees and year two for free at Cardone On Demand Training and Sales Solution. That is a $19,000 giveaway for each and every person on this webinar right now. 310-777-0255. Can you beat it? No, you can't. Also. At the conclusion of the webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. Please fill it out because we're always looking for great feedback from our audience. Tell Grant what a great job he did if you like what he said. And today we're also going to randomly select a couple of people from all those completed surveys to also win some Google Prizes. So let's get started. Let's learn how we can dominate our market through people, processes, and practices. 
Grant Cardone, it has only been, I think, nine months that I've been trying to get you on my show, and I am so pleased that you are here today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate Dealer on thinking enough of me to, to give us this webinar. And I want to thank everyone that's taking their time during their day, whether it's 12 o'clock in your time zone or 10 o'clock in the morning, or maybe it's 6 p.m. in the afternoon in India, because I know we have Guatemala, the U.K., India, at least that we know about. So I want to thank each of you. I, I, before I get started, I just want to tell you how important that I believe salespeople and sales organizations and the entrepreneurial spirit is to every country, not just America, but even the global economy. And, and this work, this particular webinar was created for each of you, regardless of what your position is, salesperson, finance manager, a desk manager, whether you're brand new in the automobile business, maybe you're not even in the automobile business, or you're an owner of a company. It is critical and vital that you learn how to dominate your marketplace. That's what I'll be making a case for, how to dominate your marketplace with people, processes, and practices. We'll be talking about advertising, that advertising generates a lead, that it's awareness, training, testing, and coaching that actually converts that to a sale which is clearly why each of you are showing up at work each day. Yeah, but before, you, before, be you get, about before you get started, I have to say there's a lot of people writing in who wanted to say happy birthday to you. So I'm just going to oh. get that out of the way right now. Grant, I'm Thank not going to say happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let me just suggest to you that birthdays are overrated, but I do appreciate the happy birthday. <laughs> okay, great. If you want to give me a present today, what you would do is go close the deal so you can take care of your family. <laughs> that would be the best, the best way to close an extra deal for Grant. And I don't even want half the deal. <laughs> well, that's a good idea. And, and don't forget also, um, actually, Grant, you did tell me what you wanted uh, as a birthday present from everyone on the call today. You wanted them to answer this first question before you got started with all of this automotive amazing awesomeness that you're about to lay down on us. So really fast, I'm going to launch this first poll question. There's a lot of you out there today, but Grant wants to know, why did you come here today? Please select one of the following answers. Was it because you were looking for some motivation from Grant? Do you just simply want to make some more money? Hey, that answer is up there too. Were you looking for some new ideas? Or you just know, you want to crush your competition. Or maybe you just didn't have anything better to do today, so you thought you'd check out this whole webinar thing that we had going on today. Whatever the answer is, we want to know. When we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the poll, share the results, and get started with some brilliant Grant Cardone motivation, selling ideas, and, and uh, you know, the, the, really the, the key to how to dominate your market. Thank you so much for the votes, everyone. Almost everyone's voted now. Grant, are you ready to see why people came here to, to talk to you today? I want to know. Please tell me. <laughs> okay. we still got some more votes coming in. My goodness. Well, happy birthday, Grant. Are you going to tell us how old you are? I am 55 years old today. 55 in nine months. Wow. What? 50, wait, 55 in nine months? How do you do that? <laughs> because, because Inception would have been nine months ago. Oh, is that how you? Oh, my gosh. You sound just like my husband. Okay. Here we go. We're going to close this poll and share the results with almost everyone voting. I want you to know that today, 42% of today's audience said flat out they want to crush their competition. I would have. I told John. I said I guarantee you that'll be the answer. That'll be the answer. 42%. 35% said they're looking for new ideas. Couldn't think of anyone better to get them from than you today. 18% of people said they just want to make more money, and 5% said you're the guy to give them some motivation. Believe it or not, no one said they didn't have anything better to do. This is the best thing that they wanted to do today. So uh, if you're ready, Grant, so are we. Let's go. I'm ready, and, and so this is perfect. Perfect. If you want to crush your competition, I am going to teach you about domination today, how to dominate your market through people, processes, and practices. We'll be talking about advertising. If you're the owner of the company, why advertising is important, and if you're an individual salesperson, why you're advertising every day and may not know it. We're going to be talking about how to generate more leads, most importantly, how to get real awareness about these leads, how to get trained up so you're prepared and ready for each one of them, how to test out so you know for sure 
that you're ready for them and how to get coaching in real time so that you can convert each one of these. Look, I get coaching today at 55 years old. I am interested in making myself better so that I can better provide for my family, my two little girls, my wife, my company, my employees, and make sure my future is going to happen. Um, I'm unable to, there you go, okay, what domination is, okay, so if you want to crush your competition, it is vital that you know what domination or the idea of crushing competition means. Domination is not this old concept of competition. Competition has been uh, strongly uh, pervaded into the psyche of salespeople that this is a good thing. Look, competition is not a good thing. You don't want to compete, and let me tell you why. See, Jack Welch said if you don't have a competitive advantage, he was the, uh, the chief operating officer of GE for years. He said if you don't have a competitive advantage, then don't compete. And that is the premise for this webinar today. You do not want to attack a competitor at the place where they are strongest. What you want to do is go find that weakness that everybody has, including myself, including all your competitors. Competition is defined as, if you've ever looked the word up, and if you haven't looked the word up, you should, competition is defined as the effort of two or more parties acting independently to secure the business of a third party, a customer, by offering the most favorable terms. So just look, imagine what that says right there. Here's two people in business going after a third person that wants a product or service, and these two parties then try to offer this person the most favorable terms. So who's competition good for? It's good for the third party, and it's not good for the other two. So what is the most favorable terms you can offer? In extremely competitive environments, particularly the automobile business, where you have compressed margins, you have great quality products across the board. There are, there are no cars built in this country that are not great cars. They're all safe. They're all dependable. They're great automobiles. So what happens is your competitive advantage that you're thinking with every day that could become a problem for you every day will be related down to three or six basic things. Facility, inventory, price, advertising, people, or process. There's only a couple things here that actually give you a dominating competitive advantage. The facility. You've seen car dealers now for the last 10 years spend $5 million, $10 million, $15 million, $50 million on facilities, trying to outdo one another believing the bigger the facility, man, if we offer golf in the facility or we offer cappuccinos or massages or haircuts, look, that is so expensive to do. How big can your facility be before it no longer makes sense? Then there's inventory. You had 200 units. Now you have 400 units. Now you have 600 units. How, many, how much money do you have invested in inventory? Then you have the dealer that tries to compete on price. You know he's down the street from you. Hopefully he's not you that I'm about to talk about that keeps discounting the price. He wants to be the lowest cost provider. He wants to be the guy that sells under invoice, that gives every car away. I want to remind you of companies like Sears, J.C. Penney's, Barnes & Noble. Okay? These are companies that are based on the lowest price and no service. These are companies that are now going out of business or about to go out of business. These are great, unbelievable franchises, brand names known in America, Barnes & Noble, Sears, Pennies, that are all suffering because they try to compete on this thing called price. Your dealership can no longer do it, and you can't do it as a manager nor as a salesperson because you will have no money to bring home to your family. Then there's the dealer that tries to, to compete on advertising, or he tries to outspend the other dealers in the marketplace. And what is he advertising? He's typically advertising price, payment, and trade. Then there's the hardest two things to compete on, 
people, and process, which is where we'll have our attention today. Hey, do you have the best people in the marketplace? Do you have the best process in the marketplace? Because at the end of the day, no matter how big your facility is, how shiny the floors, no matter how clean the windows, no matter how much inventory or how low your price is, no matter how many different places you advertise, it's going to come down to people and processes. So where's your advantage at? You're going to see this screen a number of times in this presentation. Where is your advantage? Is it advertising? Is it the leads you get? How many leads can we get this weekend? How much direct mail can we send to generate thousands of people today on the showroom floor or this weekend that are interested in us? But how many times have you seen that thousand person lead, all this traffic for a weekend actually become a waste of time and effort because the people in the process were not in place to convert these advertising dollars that converted to leads but never get converted to sales. We've all been there. I've been there, you've been there, and hopefully we change that today. Your competitive advantage. If you're taking notes, if you want to write this down, your competitive advantage will always be found wherever your competitor is the weakest. I'm going to repeat that. Your competitive advantage will always be found, always be found in your competitor's weakness. So where would your competitor be weakest? Advertising, leads, people, process, or in the sales? We spent $30 billion. This is from NADA, just so you know. $30 billion was spent in click, social, video, Facebook, Google, Twitter, content, TV, newspaper, radio, print, online, offline, $30 billion was spent in 2012. If you're on Twitter right now, hey, I'm watching Grant Cardone's webinar with Dealer on. Car business spent $30 billion. Divide that by the number of new and used cars sold last year, and it is an astounding number. So we're going to have a poll question here. I'd like to ask you a question before I move on. Yes, that's right. We do have a couple of questions. So right now, everyone, I'd like you to look at your screen, get in front, get your mouse, and answer this question for Grant. How many hours a week go into planning your advertising? Is it one to three hours, four to six hours, seven or more hours, or maybe you just, you know, you really don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's not your cup of tea. Maybe somebody else takes care of that. That's fine, too. Answer that question for us, and once we get a majority of the votes, we're going to close the poll, share the results, see what Grant has to say about it. So the question again, how many hours a week, how many hours in one week do you go planning your advertising? One to three hours, four to six hours, seven or more hours, or you just don't know. Well, now we have a majority of the votes. I want to thank everyone for getting involved and getting your votes in. Grant, are you ready to hear what our audience has to say? I am ready. Okay, let's share the results. We're going to close this poll and share the results. Let's see. 34% of today's audience said one to three hours. Right behind that, 31% of today's audience said it's more like four to six hours. 13% of today's audience said that they spend seven or more hours a week planning their advertising, and 22%, so really more than a fifth of today's audience, said that they don't know. Grant, is that what you were expecting? Yeah, the, the point here is that it, it, the awareness of the individual, the salesperson, the manager, or the owner of the company, look at the amount of time you're spending on planning advertising, and then we're going to compare that to where the deficiency is of your competition. Okay. So if you go back, go ahead. Do you want to go to the next one? Whatever, whenever you're ready. You tell me to go to the next yeah. question. So, so when you, yeah, let me just finish this with $30 billion is spent in advertising, and we have people spending a quarter to a thir you know, three and four hours spent on advertising, and we're going to compare that to some other deficiencies that maybe your competition has that we can actually uh, take advantage of or exploit. 
But I'd like to go on to the next question as well. Uh, that's a great idea. Okay, everyone, you're not done your work yet. We want to know, what is your monthly advertising spend? So please select one of the following answers. Do you spend about twenty to $40,000 a month on advertising? Is it more like forty to $60,000 a month on advertising? Is it 60000 or more? Or are you just not sure? Maybe that's not your bag. Maybe somebody else in the dealership takes care of that. Or you really don't know because you have so much money going out, you never really sat there and added it up. Whatever the case is, let us know. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we'll close the poll, share the results, and then Grant will tell us <laughs> if we're right or we're wrong. So what's your monthly advertising spend? Twenty to 40000 40 to 60000 60000 or more? Or you just don't know. Grant, are you ready to hear what our audience has to say? I am ready. Okay. With a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll, share the results. Astoundingly, 40% of today's audience are not sure what their monthly advertising spend is. 40%. 38% of today's audience think that their monthly advertising spend is between twenty dollars and 40000 a month. And we have an even 11% for the remaining two options. 11% of today's audience say it's 40 to 60%. And 11% of today's audience say it's $60,000 or more. So at the low end here, we have a dealer that's spending $250,000 a year. And at the high end, somewhere between seven hundred and twenty and a million dollars a year or more. Wow. And then 40% of the population uh, is not sure. And I'm going to suggest to you that that's not your fault. And I'm going to explain to you why in this webinar, why this is the area that you want to exploit in 2013. Before I go on, though, I want to play you a video that may tell the story better than I can. This was shot three weeks, maybe four weeks ago, John Lamb? Maybe four weeks ago. It was shot here in Miami, okay? So I want you to watch this two-minute video to understand where your competitive dominating advantage actually is. Do you know what full page ad your store is running this weekend? Uh, yes, we pretty much I have an idea of what we are running. Tell me about the mailer that your store recently sent. You know, I haven't been uh, debriefed on the mailer. Any specific, any specific promotion that you're running on any particular makes or models? Not that I know at this point. And when do you normally get informed about an ad before it runs? Uh, from the dealer, I mean, uh, uh, to be honest with you, we don't get any of <laughs> We found those ourselves. <laughs> Tell me about the mailer that your store just sent out. Uh, that I don't know that either because I have the have tell us yet. Tell me about the mailer that you guys just sent out. The mailer we just sent out, it's, uh, it's a mailer based on, on leases. And our sales, it, you know, it mentions a lot of our warranty. And how much training do you get on how to respond to ad calls or walk-in or internet leads based on the advertising and the promotion that you guys have? That's a difficult question to answer. I think that uh, maybe we need to uh, gain a little bit more training in that area. Uh, and then tell me about the mailer that you guys just sent out. Uh, the mailer we send out, uh, for this month, I have no idea. Do you know when the sale might start? Well, right now, I think it starts right now because at the end of the month. Who would be the target customer of the mailer that got sent out? Pretty much everybody. And how much training do you get on specifically how to handle ads, internet inquiries, uh, phone calls that are based on the ads and the promotions that you run in the dealership? Uh, well, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, so basically, I mostly do my own training on that. How much training do you get on the specific types of ad campaigns that you run? Well. From one is uh, like scale from one to ten. Ten is perfect. I give you a two. Okay, so you're probably sitting there laughing. Oh my God! You may be doing the OMG thing. <laughs> you may be shocked. Keep in mind that it, out of our poll, the the at the dealers on this webinar today are spending somewhere between two hundred and forty thousand dollars and a million dollars a year in advertising. The video that you're watching right now, or just watched, we covered the faces to protect these gentlemen. These are, just so you know, 
very, very experienced salespeople, very professional salespeople that all make a lot of money and have made a lot of money. Just imagine if their dealership had taken the time, not just to advertise, but to actually make them aware of the program, train them on the program, create a, an actual funnel for them to know what's being advertised, what kind of customers this is going to bring in. This, this problem here is not just their fault, but an industry problem and, most importantly, your competitive advantage. We're going to have another poll right here. This will be our last one of the day. That's a two-part poll, and this is going to clarify something for each of you of where you can actually exploit your competitor's uh, weakest area. Okay, let's go. Okay, everyone, don't write in to me with the answer. I need you to turn to your computer screen and answer right there on the radio button. So the question before you is, how many hours a week does your staff get trained? Is it zero to one hour, one to two hours, two to three hours, three or more hours, or you know what? <laughs> Maybe you just don't know. Whatever the answer is, let us know. Vote now. So how many hours a week does your staff train? Is it an hour or less, one to two hours, two to three hours, three or more hours, or you just don't know? You know what? We already have a majority of the votes in. So Grant, you tell me when you're ready to hear what our very smart audience has to say. <laughs> or, or not. <laughs> Grant, are you there? Hello? Grant, did I lose you? Well, maybe we didn't lose Grant. Okay, well, hopefully Grant will be there. Um, <laughs> I know you guys are writing in. Here we go. We're going to close this poll and share the results. So, Grant, 33% of today's audience said they fall about one to two hours worth of training a week. 25% of today's audience said it's an hour or less. 25% of today's audience said it's three or more hours. 9% of today's audience said it's more like two to three hours. And a very small 8% said that they just didn't know how many hours a week their staff trained. Grant, what did you think? Grant, are you there? Oh boy, don't tell me I lost Grant. Grant, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I'm there here. you are. <laughs> I lost you for a second. No, you're not allowed to lose me. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so uh, did you hear anything that I just said, or did you actually, you couldn't no, hear No, I didn't, I didn't hear any of that, but I'm seeing the results right now. Oh, okay, fantastic. So as you can see, 33% of today's audience, which is the majority, said that they train about one to two hours a week. Does that sound about right? Yes, I see that, and... and that's great. That's great if you're doing that much training. Yeah, a quarter of today's audience said that they train three or more hours, which I think is phenomenal. I do think it's phenomenal, and I'm going to show you a way to do your training in a much shorter period of time because I would not want to spend three hours a week training. Okay. And I'm a trainer. I make my living training. Okay. I, I, here I am out here, 25 years, been teaching companies and organizations through books. Uh, I got to go back. Yeah, through books and and training no materials. Uh, so I'm all for training, but you don't want to spend three hours getting ready. You want to be ready, stay ready, and let me tell you why this is happening. I said the three gentlemen in that video, professional, experienced. There was even a manager in there that couldn't answer our questions. The reason this is happening is because your environment right now, you are covered up with Google, Edmonds, Twitter. Cars.com, Auto Trader, Kelly Blue Book, Ben Solutions, DMV, Dealer.com, Mannheim Auctions, ADP, OEM, Black Book, Facebook, and on top of that, how many of you have this to handle? Marriage, interviews, taking care of your body, interviewing employees, maybe trying to hire somebody, taxes, going to the doctor, kids. Schools, PTA meetings, church. What happens to this individual at this point? 
See, even if you're training three hours a day or two hours or you're not sure, what happens to you as a salesperson, as a manager, as a finance person, as an owner, and keep in mind, this is Grant Cardone telling you who's got a training company. We did more sales training in stores last year than any other company in the country with Chrysler, Infinity, and Nissan. Over 3,000 days of training. Our problem is the same as your problem. I'm talking to people that are covered up. Do you ever feel covered up by your task, your job, auctions, customers, marriage, schools, churches? I know I feel like that. See, we lost focus. Okay? Keep in mind the average the, the, the automobile business is going to spend 30 billion dollars this year, and the average salesperson the average salesperson's production has not yet gone up. The reason this has happened is our focus is on advertising and leads, and we lost attention for this big blue area called awareness, coaching, training, preparation, sales meetings, testing, prospecting, sales solutions, internet, road to the sale reporting, and phone skills. These things that are so critical to your career. So while you may be spending three hours a week, or none at all. While you may be spending three hours a week training, is it on the awareness of your program? Are you getting coaching in real time? Or are you just sitting in a long meeting? Are you getting training on those problems and situations you need the most help on? See, if I'm sitting with a group of people, and I'm an experienced 30-year veteran salesperson, and I'm already at the top of my game, and I'm sitting in a room of 16 other people getting the information 15 of those other people need, that training may not be suited for me. A sales meetings, maybe you all have sales meetings. Sales meetings is not sales training. Are you being tested after your training? Because if you're not being tested, we don't know what you know or don't know, and the truth is you don't know what you know or don't know. Here's a sales formula that will be become very important to you before the day and before this week's over. It's called the Cardone Sales Formula. I want to give credit to my friend, Chief Marketing Officer of my company, John Lamb, for this brilliant formula. We should call it the Lamadama, but we call it the Cardone Sales Formula. Ads equal leads, people equal sales. Now you've done two polls today. The first poll was how much time do you spend on advertising? And the second poll was how much time do you spend on training? You are spending, based on the polls, three to four times more, three to four times more time on advertising than you are training and preparation. And many of you don't even know the ads we're running. We don't know how much money we're spending. I don't know what the ad is. I don't know the campaign that went out. I don't know what the offer was. Each of us has been put into that situation before. I can't tell you how many ads, how many customers I've taken that came up to me with a coop, with an offer in their hand. And that was the first time I saw that offer. If this has happened to you, don't feel bad. It's happened to millions of salespeople. Management, three, thir uh, how much, John? 30 billion? 30 billion dollars in ad money in 2012. Ads equal leads, people, people equal sales. I'd ask you to do this. Compare your ad budget to your preparation budget. Compare your ad dollar. How much money do you think was spent on training the automobile business last year? Folks, I promise you it didn't have a billion dollars behind it. And if it did, it was mostly product knowledge. Product knowledge is not your problem. Explain to me how you spend $30 billion in ad spend in one year. Yet the average salesperson nationwide still performs below his or her potential. The average salesperson in the United States with house deals sells 8.3 cars. 8.3 cars. That means the average performance is going down, not going up. Yet the average spend is going up. 
the average newspaper, TV, radio, and search will make more money on a single car transaction than the people involved in that transaction for three and four hours. The average car dealer in the United States is making more money today. The average person in that store, salesperson, manager, and finance manager is making less money. I want to say that again. The average dealer in America is making more money today than 2009, one of our banner years. When was our last banner year? The 16 million. Yeah, it was 2008. I think it was right before the collapse. That was the last big year we got. Maybe 2007. The average dealer will make more money than his best year. That is not true about the average salesperson. Why? Why is your performance lower than the ad spend? It should go up. Otherwise, there's a waste of money somewhere in this stream. This is why, because you're covered up. You're covered up with marriage, family, taxes. I'm under three audits right now, three audits going on for my business and personal. The IRS will not leave me alone. I got two little girls, a three-year-old, a one-year-old. I got a wife to take care of. Those are completely separate items. I got a school two blocks from where I office. The teacher's asking me, am I going to be involved in helping my daughter learn how to read? I said, you've got to be kidding me. Okay. I'm handling three companies. I have two books I'm working on right now, a, a Twitter account that I handle myself, three Facebook pages, a Google account. We're trying to build out three websites, hire new people. I got two little munchkins that I got to feed, pay attention to. I'm trying to take care of my body and keep myself in shape so I don't die of a heart attack like my father did. And you're asking me if I'm going to teach my daughter how to read? Dude, your job is to teach her how to read. My job is to teach her how to push through in life and provide a safe place for her to do great. My job is to go out and get customers from all over the world to know my name and sell my products to. Okay? I got my hands full with a marriage, kids, feeding them, taking care of them, paying the bills, an audit, getting a workout in every once in a while, and you're telling me to do something else? This is why your performance is where it is, and this is what you have to know is the way to dominate your competition because your competition, think about the dealer down the street. Does he suffer from this same phenomenon? Having to go to the auction, the auction, having to deal with KBB, having a meeting with Auto Trader. He's got family. Okay, so what do we do? What's the solution? Is it a bigger facility? Is it more inventory? Is it lower prices? So many of you think that a lower price closes deals. Some of you believe if I go to one price, it will do it. Maybe you believe we'll do more advertising, or maybe your dealer says, we just need to hire another three or four or five more salespeople. Maybe you're a manager that thinks you just need better people. Look, there aren't any better people in your marketplace. There's no better people. We've been saying for 30 years, where's all the good people? There's no good people in St. Louis. There's no good people in, in Decatur. There's no good people in L.A. There's no good people in Miami. Or maybe we need to go to specialists. Maybe we need more balloons. Or maybe we just need a bigger inflatable gorilla. That'll do it. Folks, you can't do it like that. There's only one way to do this. The only solution is your people. The only solution is your people. For those of you who said you're spending three hours a week on training, okay, 12 hours a week, I got to tell you, you're trained. There's something wrong with your training if it's taking you 12 hours a month to move the bar. I could get you 12 minutes a day, 12 minutes every day, and and that that's a total of one hour and 12 minutes a week. And I guarantee you, I'll get you another two deals every week per person. Why? Because you need help in real time. You have to have help in real time, not when a manager wants to do a meeting. Salespeople and managers and finance people and parts and service people, they need real solutions to real problems, not a guy standing in front of a flip chart and a plant talking about what happened three or four years ago. Sales meetings. Your sales meetings need to be daily and they need to be for every possible situation. Sales meetings do not need to be theory. They need to be sharp. They need to be specific and they need to be real situations. 
If you're having questions as I'm going through this, write it down. We'll take them at the end of the uh, at the end of the call, or you can post them now, and I'll make sure we get to them. Also, for training to be effective, it needs to be different for different people. Tony needs training different than Grant needs training. Finance needs training different than Joe the closer. Joe the closer needs something different than the the used car salesperson is brand new. There needs to be training for every level and every position. Man, you're like, dude, how, how do I have time to do this? I can't even do this. I can barely manage all these other activities. Remember, the only thing that is going to increase the production of your store is people. Testing and reporting. If you're not doing testing and reporting, I would say to you, for those of you who said you do three hours every week in training, if there is no testing and no reporting, you need to count your training at zero. And then most importantly, there must be drilling and role playing. Before I did this webinar, we drilled it and we role played it, and I still don't have it perfect. How? How are you going to do this? Okay? Here's your choices. Webinar. Seminars. Okay? You're going to do a webinar. How often are you going to do a one-hour webinar? Can I be with you every day? Do you have the time to give me one hour every day? I don't have the time to give you one hour every day. I'm sorry I can't do it. Are you going to listen to a different webinar every day? You know what that's going to get you? Confusion. Seminars. I just did a seminar in Miami. There was 435 people in that room. We were talking about one topic for four hours, closing a deal, period. I will not be back in Miami for a seminar for a year and a half. Conferences. Conferences are so popular right now. It seems like every time I turn around, there's a conference. I have three to do next month. Conferences have become a monster business is what they are. Okay? You go, you spend all day there, you meet a lot of people, you get a little motivation, you get a bunch of ideas. It's great, but you can't send all your people there. So you say, okay, we're going to hire an in-house trainer. Maybe you're a big group. We're going to hire an in-house guy. We're going to pay him sixty, seventy, eighty thousand 80000 a year. We have three stores. That one person cannot get to all your people when they need it. Remember, I need, I need information when I need it not when somebody wants to give it to me. Or maybe you're going to hire my company, the Cardone Group, to do on-site consultants. If you called my company today right now and said, Grant, we, want, we need three or four days of training, I can't get out there because of our calendar. I have 20 trainers in place right now that will be at 75 sites this week, and I can't get you anybody for 90 days. Books and tapes? Grab me my books and tapes. I got, I've written five books since in the last four years since Lehman collapsed. Okay? Get them all and read them all. But when you're in the middle of a deal or you just took a phone call or you just had a fight with your wife, look, what are you going to do? Go grab a book and read it? Or maybe you go to YouTube and watch Grant on YouTube or watch whoever your trainer is on YouTube. And management, that's how you want to train your people. Look, they're not going to be watching Grant on YouTube. They're going to be watching Kim Kardashian sell her goodies, listening to Dr. Dre sell his sticky icky. So what's the solution? This is what we did. In the last 12 months, actually 18 months now, we went to the cloud to solve this problem so that you could get a webinar, a seminar, a conference, sales meetings, books, tapes, on-site, in real-time solutions. Just imagine, you're one salesperson. You're one manager. You're one finance guy. Or you're a parts or service guy. You're a desk manager. You wake up in the morning. You wake up at 6. You get the kids off to school. You get to the dealership, and the first thing we have, oh, by the way, one of you had a wreck on the way to work. One of you got in a fight with the wife. Two of you had to rush the kids off to school. One of you had a kid that's sick. You got a phone call saying a deal was turned down, and that's all before you got to work. And you have 20 management. You have 20 of those people to manage. So multiply those problems times 20. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to use the cloud for you to access all information from your phone, from your iPad, from your Android, or from a computer at 8.05 in the morning for seven minutes, you're going to run a sales meeting. When that sales meeting is over with, by the way, we have a different sales meeting for you every day. I'm, I'm giving you the perfect platform. 
You want to run a different meeting every day. Why am I doing this? I'm looking for my dominating advantage. I'm looking for the place where I don't compete, but I dominate, where I smother, crush, take market. I, I literally rape and pillage the entire sector, stealing from them everything they weren't able to encapsulate on because they don't do sales, me uh, sales meetings daily and they don't do sales me uh, training. So between 9.05 and 9.09, every salesperson, every manager in the organization is going to spend four minutes in sales training. Between 10.30 and 10.35, the salesperson has nothing to do. They can go to the cloud and come up with prospecting tips and watch a short video on who to call today to fill up their funnel. Imagine at 12.07, you have an appointment coming in at 12.30. You spend three minutes preparing to close that deal. You go to the cloud from your pad, your phone, or your computer, jump on, and you can actually access in a specific space how to prepare for that close. At 121, after the customer came in and you either sold or failed to sell this customer, you de debrief the sale. But you no longer do this with your manager, who's covered up by Google Ads and Facebook and the manufacturer and ordering inventory or buying a trade-in, but you do it from, your, from the cloud and spend three minutes to debrief the sale. At three o'clock a phone call came in and you didn't get an appointment. You go to a tool in the cloud called Call Correction and I can pop up in two minutes tell you exactly why you failed to sell an appointment for that call. And at the end of the night, at 10 p.m. automatically, you get a report telling you what you achieved that day, what your reporting is, what you covered, and how you tested out. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm telling you is your dominating advantage is no longer advertising and marketing. It is people and process. So we went to the cloud. We basically created a cloud-based solution that takes your advertising that generates leads. All advertising works. All direct mail campaigns work. All TV ads work. All radio and print work. Because what does it do? It generates a lead. Lead then calls your company. This is where it hits this blue funnel. You, people, process. This, we have it in blue because blue is about loyalty. It's about how do I create a process a funnel, how do I create an experience where we convert every opportunity? So maybe you're being taught this today. Look, when I greet a customer, I greet a customer to convert. When I take a phone call, I do that to convert. When I answer an email, I do that to convert to a sale, to a write-up, to a demo. I meet a human being to find out what their needs are. I, I don't go meet people. We don't run ads just to generate traffic. We want to do it for what? To convert to a sale. So what we've done is basically go to the cloud to create this phenomenon, okay? So that every individual, each individual salesperson in the organization, salesperson, a manager, a finance manager, a parts person, a brand new person, a closer, somebody with three months or somebody with 30 years can go in their own time from their own device and access the cloud in a controlled environment for the exact problems that they need. Now this example shows a sales meeting, but the sales meeting I run today is going to be different than the one I run tomorrow. The sales training at 9.05 that I take today for my phone or my iPad or my computer, my Droid or my, 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 my uh, smartphone or from my Blackberry, the sales training I do is going to be different than Tony, it's going to be different than John, it's going to be different than Jen, it's going to be what I need when I need it. But, you know, at 10.30 in the morning, between 10.30 and 10.35, I might be doing something different than other people. The point is, you get to access when you want it, in real time, the situations, the concerns you have, and are able to convert those 
on your schedule, not on mine. Ladies and gentlemen, as many of you know, I've been doing sales training for 25 years since I was 30 years old, 25 years this month actually. I have traveled all over the United States, every major city. I've delivered over 2,000 seminars. We have a school in Orlando, Florida uh, that we run for managers every month. We deliver uh, over 3,000 days of sales training in stores last year. I can't be everywhere. Joe can't be everywhere. Jim can't be everywhere. And none of us. The man manufacturer can't be there everywhere, and your manager cannot be with you everywhere. The only way to do this is to take your training and load it up into the cloud and be able to deliver your people what they need when they need it. So the special offer today that we brought up at the beginning is uh, either 24 months at $1,100 or two years of training at our full price and we'll give you the second year for free. I want to open it up because we're down to about four minutes now to, to uh, questions that you, we may have collected. Yes, we have plenty of questions. And uh, before we get to that, though, by the way, Grant, um, lots of people are writing in, so we have a lot, a lot of people who uh, have comments for you. So uh, before we write in, though, we want to give away to one lucky person who's going to win it for their dealership, a Close the Sale app. And if you haven't already gotten this app, people were writing in before the webinar began and saying how great this app is. And it must be great, because tell everyone again, it's number two on iTunes. Is that right? Yeah, we, we basically, when we came out with this app, it hit the top seven. This was a year ago. We came out with the app for $200, and it was number 17 on iTunes. We took it down to four ninety nine this weekend before this webinar actually for the webinar and it hit number two on iTunes. Okay, so a lot of people like it and actually somebody just wrote in Neil said David Bradley got me to buy it on Tuesday. <laughs> so yeah. uh, a lot of people already have it but here's the deal. If you can answer this question, be the first person to write in the response, Grant is going to buy the app for your dealership. Is that right, Grant? That's right. That's right. So if you, you're, one person is going to win it. If you have 40 people in your store, I'm going to buy the app for all 40 of them. That is incredible. But you've got to be the first person to write in the correct response to this question. So get in front of your keyboards. Get ready to type fast. Accuracy is key, of course. But here we go. And good luck, everyone. Just answer the right question. Here we go. First one to write in the correct response will be walking away with this awesome prize today. The question is, what is the Cardone sales formula? I'll give you a hint. It's a two-part answer. What is also the Cardone? referred to? Yeah, also referred to as the John Lamadama. The John Lamadama. So, what is the Cardone sales formula? Oh, I think we have a winner. We have a winner. Wow, that was quick. People are still writing in too. Whoa, geez, Louise. Okay, you can stop writing in. <laughs> Uh, let me just make sure it is correct. And the answer is ads equal leads, people equal sales. Our winner is Fallon Price. Fallon Price, congratulations, Fallon. Can you find out how many salespeople he has there? Fallon, how many salespeople do you have at your dealership? And what dealership are you from, Fallon? She already wrote in, yay, thank you. And she said, five salespeople, three managers. It's Land Rover flat irons. Congratulations. Oh, you guys don't need anything to close. People <laughs> just buy those cars. <laughs> That's too bad. You're going to have to give it to her anyway. Well, congratulations, okay. Fallon. Very, very pleased for you. Okay, let's get started. Oh, and of course, um, Grant, I just want to remind the audience that uh, Everyone on the live broadcast is receiving that special offer from Grant. He's waiving all the activation fees and year two for free on his Cardone on-demand training and sales solution platform. That is a value of up to $19,000 for each and every one of you on this webinar today. So all you have to do is call Grant's office at 310-777-0255 within three hours of the conclusion of this webinar and get your dealership signed up. That is a fantastic offer. Of course, we want to congratulate our winner, Fallon Price. We want to thank Cardone Enterprises for their incredible generosity. 
And now, without further ado, let's get started on some of these really great questions from the audience members. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, here we go. First question comes to us from, well, I don't know if it's a question so much, but uh, Seth wants to know, where can we find Grant's social media links? Do you have any social media links you can share? Yeah, uh, let me see. I don't know if I can do it. Yeah, I can probably do it here in real time. Um, well, at Twitter, I'm at Grant Cardone. I am the num top, I was voted last year, just a little bragging here, number one sales expert on Twitter. Say again. And um, the number top ten business coaches on Twitter to follow. So you might want to just check that out. It's at Grant Cardone. I'm going to put it over here on the side. On Facebook, go to Car look for uh, Cardone Success on Facebook. And my name's on LinkedIn, Grant Cardone. If you're ever looking for me, just look for Grant Cardone. You'll probably find me. <laughs> That's probably true. And yeah, you should put it on your slide with your with your uh, picture and your contact information too when you get a chance, Grant. Okay. And uh, Dave Fox, he wrote in, he says, I closed one for you, Grant. Excellent, Dave. Okay, next one, comes. Alberto said, put the coffee down. Coffee is for closers. That must be a private joke. <laughs> Yeah, let me just say that uh, the coffee's for closers, but espresso's for slammers. Okay, well, there you go. Um, okay, Anthony wrote in, what would you suggest for training in a week? Uh, so how many, I mean, I know we asked how many hours yeah. a week should we train. So how the, many? The, the ideal situation is this, this, this example that I gave today. When, when somebody does three segments before noon and three segments of content in the afternoon, this is the perfect scenario right here. But in it's in every little case, slip snippets. It's not like an hour these are, time. These are very short. You, look, these are two minutes. Look, I got a seven-minute sales meeting here. I got a four-minute sales training. I got a five-minute prospecting tip video right here. These are all separate videos. There's thousands of short video segments with full testing. You don't want it all loaded at the beginning of the day or in one day. You want little short pieces throughout the day that are relevant to what the person is dealing with that day. Salespeople and managers don't need theory. They need solutions to problems they're having. Nobody needs to get smarter. You just need to sell more. Nobody cares if salespeople are smart. They, what we care about is that you're converting leads to done deals. That's how you take care of your family. So the answer, the simple answer is three segments in the morning, short snippet segments specific to your problems, and then in the afternoon, three, three more segments uh, that are short snippets. Okay, Anthony, I hope that helped you out. Okay, so our next question comes from Nick. And Nick says, so after hearing your uh, Cardone sales formula, if people equals sales, it seems as though the trick is to convert leads into people. Is that correct? No, no. What it means is, and, we, and that's a great question, what it means is that you, the people, you know, the, the, lead, the lead is a person, right? The lead, the phone call, the internet hit, the requests, the guy walking in, these, that is the lead. The ad, wherever the ad ran, generated John to leave his home. Just imagine what an ad does. An ad runs, guy looks at it, oh, ma, hey, I'm in my Lazy Boy. I'm sitting here in my Lazy Boy. I'm going to get out of my Lazy Boy, get into a car, drive across town, and come see you. So that ad was very effective. Now, you know, an ad, where I say billions of dollars have been sent on ads, an ad does a lot because it's hard to get somebody out of their lazy boy or even to get somebody to pick up the phone and call or even to send an email to you or to search your company online. The fact that that happened is unbelievable. Now, people, you the people, the salesperson, the manager, the store, I'm talking about the people, you, now have to convert that because the ad doesn't do the conversion. Thank God the ad can't close the deal because if it did, you'd have another 40 or 50 million people out of work. Well, Wouldn't need salespeople. That's, that's probably 
<laughs> you know what, you're right. Nick, I hope that helped you out, answered your question. Uh, John wanted to ask, uh, he was just trying to cra clarify something. Did Grant say the average salesman sells only eight units a month? Is that what 8. you said? 8.3. 8. 8.3 8. units per month. Wow. Okay. John? Hey, li listen to this, okay? Just so you guys in the automobile business feel good. You could be, if you're in real estate, if you sell $6 million worth of real estate in one year, you're in the top 1% of all the real estate agents. That could be one house. Hmm. I could sell one house and be in the top 1% of all real estate agents in the country. Yeah, but the, average sales, the average salesperson has never read one sales book. They're not educated. They're not trained. That's a problem. But that one house, that one million dollar house, that gets them a lot of money. I mean, that's that's more than a lot of people make in one year. That's sixty thousand dollar, you know, payday for them. But but if you're selling one house, it's probably because you got lucky, and next year you're not going to sell any houses. Mm, you're probably right. Okay. You next volume. Uh, I, I yeah. hear you. And uh, next question comes to us from Chinar. He says, "How many hours should I spend on advertising for every product, and how much money?" Well, without knowing more about your dealership, your demographics, and, and, and your marketplace, that, that would be a little difficult to answer. But you could call in, call our office, and, and I'm happy to take your call and work with you on that. All right, Chenar, you heard him. He said to give him a call. Okay, next question comes to us from Scott. He says, Grant, I can't agree more. My problem is I believe in the training for the staff. I just can't get my owners to pull the trigger on paying for something like Cardone On Demand. I do it myself with mixed results, and it's very frustrating when you want to be the best. So do you yeah. have any, any um, advice for Scott on how to get his owners to pull the trigger on more training? Well, you know, this is a, we hear this quite, quite often. You know, the dealer's like, hey, i got two managers. They're supposed to do it. What you need to do is show your dealer this image. So you're paying me eighty thousand a year, or you're paying me one twenty, or I don't care what you pay. You pay me two hundred. Look, I got a three-year-old daughter. No matter how much money I give her, she can't lift a hundred pounds. No matter how many cookies I offer her, if you're asking people to do something they're incapable of doing because they no longer have the time, they're not going to be able to do it, and you're not good at it. I mean, maybe you should do your own teeth too, and go to your, you know, be your own chiropractor, and give your own prostate exams. You, you can't be, you can't do everything. It's impossible. So I would show the dealer this image. Sir, when you, when you have, if you have a heart problem, who are you going to? Hmm. You, you know, you, you don't do your own heart exams. So if yeah. you get an, if you get a, a, an audit, are you going to get a, somebody to help you with the audit or you think your used car manager is going to do it? You, the, de, the, de, the management team cannot do the training and handle Edmonds, Google, Facebook, Blackbook, ADP, the auction, their kids, church, taxes, the doctor, it's impossible. And you need to have that conversation with the dealer and maybe show them this image. Mm. Yeah, Scott actually wrote back and he said, Grant, how can I grow my sales with an unwilling, unwillingness to spend money from the ownership to train its staff? Do you have a magic solution on how I can show them the value of training? Yeah, we should phone shop your store. Yeah? I'll, we'll phone shop your store and show them how bad it is. Well, Scott, it looks like you just got to call up Grant's office and see if they could set that up for you. <laughs> because, because here's the deal. The dealer, you need to sit down with the dealer. Or you, need me to, you need to have me sit the dealer down and just tell him. You have a responsibility, sir, to train and educate your people. This is the most difficult automotive market in the history of automobiles. Your customer is extremely well educated. They're spending 9 to 11 hours on the Internet before they get to the store. Your closing ratios, since the Lehman collapse, closing ratios in your dealership should have gone up, not down. They should have been proved, not gone down. But you're covered up. You can't get to them. It's just impossible. And your dealer has an obligation to do more than just spend money with Duncan Scary. Scott, take down the phone number and give Grant's office a call, and let's see if they can help you work this out to get you guys some more training. 
Okay. And I love Duncan. Duncan's a good friend of mine, but you you got you got to spread it out so people know what the ad is and know how to handle people. Right, right. Okay. Vinit has a great question. Vinit wrote in as an entry level sales executive, how can I dominate and make an impact? The the way to dominate first Look, if I want to dominate a sector, and this, this information comes out of a book called The 10X Rule. If you, don't, if you don't like to read, it comes out of a program called The 10X Audio Program. And when Lehman collapsed and the world was in trouble, basically I started looking, number one, where my comp, what my competition won't do. It's in this frame right here where I said, always your competitive advantage will, will always be found in your competitor's weakness. Make a list of where your competitors are weak. What will they not do? The average salesman in the car business has never read one book on sales. So what do we know? The average salesperson, maybe not the average person listening to this webinar today, the average person is weak on training and education. Then where are they weak? Hey, they don't prospect. Then where are they weak? Uh, they don't. Uh, they don't. They don't get in front of enough people, or they're weak on the phone, or they're weak on appointments. Make a list of where people are weak, and that's where you want to dominate. Vinit, I hope that helped you out. Let's get to this next question, which comes to us from Muhammad. He says, "Grant, are you stressed? Because if you're not, you are amazing. But if yes." How do you deal with the stress with all the things you're involved in? That's a great question, Grant. How, do, how does somebody who has all these stresses, how do you deal with it and still be productive and successful? Well, that, you know, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I don't really think about it being stress. You know, I, I, I'm just in a game. I'm playing a game all the time. And Anytime I feel overwhelmed, what I actually do is I just take on more projects. <laughs> aren't, you, aren't you worried that your bandwidth is like, there's no more bandwidth left? No, but you, see, you know, that's, that's a great point because I, I, I used to think my bandwidth was, was tapped out and then all I did was double up and found out, oh my gosh, my, I, just, I, I, I can do more than I think I can do. And each of you on this call today, on this webinar, you can do more than you can do, but you have to get properly motivated every day. I'm properly motivated. You know, I'm incentivized. I, I know what the goal is. The, the goal for me, I'm extremely purpose driven. I want to take care of my wife, my marriage, and my kids. I want to take care of myself, and then I want to take care of my company. It's in that order. My marriage, my kids, my, my kids are second to my marriage. I need my marriage. So my marriage, my wife, my kids, myself, and then my company. And so I'm going to do whatever it takes to do that because if I'm stressed by anything, it's the condition of the economy. I'm scared that the economy rolls over and I haven't done enough to protect those five things. And, and so do I like to read? No, nah, not really. Do I like to listen to training material? Not really, but I consume it like a beast because it motivates me. It gets me excited, and I know that the guys I compete with the Brian Tracy's, the Tom Hopkins, the 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 the, other, the Seth Godins, the people that I compete in a space with, uh, are not doing the same things I am to take care of myself, which gives me a competitive advantage. I don't want to compete. I want to dominate the space, and that's why that's why Dealer On has never had people from India. I would expect. I'm just saying this. I don't think you guys have had people from Guatemala, India, and the UK on your webinar. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I would have to go back and check. I have no idea. I know we've had some Australians. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're easy. Oh, they're easy. Because <laughs> so, they're like Americans. But the point I'm making there is that my reach, I made a commitment to reach wider, to actually expand my bandwidth and do more, not less. Muhammad, I hope that helps you out. Actually, Muhammad wrote back and he said, you must watch your own videos to overcome it because they work for me. I love it. Keep up the great work. Right Muhammad, thank you so much for that. Uh, Michael wrote in. Michael says, do all of the videos show up on iPad or iPhone or are there flash issues? 
No, there are no flash issues. There used to be flash issues. The flash issues do not exist anymore. Excellent. Uh, a different Mike wrote in, Grant, I'm the internet manager for our dealership. Do any of your books focus on this field? Well, uh, the answer to that question is absolutely. If you look at what I've done on Twitter and Facebook, there's 276,000 people following me on Twitter, 31,000 tweets in 26 months, a Facebook page with 189,000 followers. Everything I am doing, look, Facebook and Twitter are mediums, no different than than a store. I'm looking out of a window right now and I see a store over there. Me walking over to that store is no different than me tweeting, sending an email, making a phone call, or posting something about them on Facebook. These are just mediums. They're roads. They're paths. No different than a dirt road was years ago. I might not use a dirt road because I have a super highway, but I tell you what, I'll use that dirt road if I need to. So the point is, these are mediums, and in all my books, particularly my last three books, I'm talking a tremendous about, uh, amount about how to use social mediums uh, to make myself known, to get my brand, to get awareness, to get follow-up, and to get people thinking about me. Okay, so Mike, I hope that helped you out. Uh, our, it's funny, we have a couple of people who are not from automotive, but they came today. And Adam wrote in, have you ever done any trainings for technical recruiters? And Sonia wrote in, I'm from a software industry. Do you have services for complex software selling processes? We, we have a, uh, the software issues, we have a, a group that sells software on the phone. So what are we talking about? A sales organization. They sell a $10,000 product. They got on our online program. They basically put their people through the program you're looking at now. Awareness, coaching, training, preparation, sales meetings, daily testing, prospecting, sales solutions. They doubled the price of their product and increased their sales three times in one 30-day period of time. Wow. Other companies that are using our products, Morgan Stanley, Google, uh, Forex, uh, what's the insurance company? Affleck. I mean, I can go on and on. How so about Wells Fargo? Selling is selling is what you're saying, and people are people, and if you just know the secrets on how to sell properly to people, you can do it, and it applies to anyone? Ads equal leads, people equal sales. Well, there you have it, people. <laughs> okay. Uh, Adam and Sonia, I hope that helped you out. Uh, Mike wrote back in and asked, are your books available on iTunes in audio? Uh, Yes, the answer to that question is my books are available anywhere. If you can't find them there, you call my office and I'll get you handled. There's downloads, MP3s, any way you want it, we'll give it to you. We're working on holographics right now. <laughs> I love that. I'd like to see your holographics. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Mike, I hope that helped you out. Uh, next question is from Britt. He said, would it be possible to get a copy of today's presentation for upper management? Yes, it's being recorded right now. I'm going to be sending you that link later today. Uh, Kevin wrote in, Cardone On Demand, it's easy to get 20 percenters to watch the videos, but what about the 80 percenters? The 80 percenters, what do you mean the 80 percenters? I, I need clarification, like 80 percent of the dealership? Kevin, write back in. I thought that was like code for something. I read it exactly as he wrote it in. Kevin, write back in and oh, tell oh, us. Oh, because the 20 percenters sell 80 percent? Look, if you work for a company that doesn't make people do something, then I don't understand. At my company, I don't ask people, this isn't Congress where you can't get anything done. You know, you, if you're a leader in your company, you make people do the things that are good for them. Push your people to greatness. Demand your people are great. That means you prepare. I'm here in Miami. LeBron James, one of the highest paid basketball players in the history of the NBA, is not asked if he wants to do layups, dribble the ball, and practice foul, foul shots. The leader of the organization needs to make sure when you're spending $30 billion as a group on advertising that your people are well prepared, well trained, showing up on time, dressing the way you want, saying what you want, handling people the way you want, and prepared to do those things in real time. The fact that I'm ready at 8 o'clock in the morning does not mean 
I'm still handling people correctly at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So I want to help my people. There's a great video on, uh, on YouTube. If you Google search Grant Cardone and selling over the phone, you're going to see how I run my organization. It's a 16-minute video where two sales are made in a period uh, in a in a uh, in a 13-minute period of time that results in eighty thousand dollars worth of, of uh, product sales. It's just an unbelievable video about how an organization should be run. I got you. Okay, and Kevin wrote back in. And he said, "I get it now. It's not an option. Buy into it." Or walk out the door. Oh, and he said he's already watched the video. It's awesome. He's already watched it a few times. So yeah. thank you so much for that question, Kevin. Okay, let's get to our next question from John. He says, now John, we might need you to write in to clarify this more, but he says, what if your, if your salesmen know it all, but they have lots of talent, but they're, you're not ready to give up on, on him or them just yet? Then, then what I want to do, I want you to call my office and I want, I want to get them each on a questionnaire. It's called a sales IQ because the first block to learning is I think I know it all. And this sales IQ is going to show them how little they do know. Hmm. It's $50 per person and it will, I guarantee you they will be begging you for training when I'm done. All right, good. Would that be good to show an owner, too? It would be tremendous to show an owner. And let me just add to that, uh, six weeks ago I was with Morgan Stanley in Seattle. The average person in the room makes over $400,000 a year, and every one of them wanted to figure out how to make another two hundred. dollars Great. Well, John wrote back and he says, thank you, Grant. I'll call you on that. So he's, he's all over that. Okay, and anyone else? That sounds like a good deal to me. Okay. Um, Wes wrote in, being from the Detroit area, there's a huge UAW presence, and it seems that just about everyone knows someone who knows someone to get a discount with the big three. I just recently joined a Nissan dealer. Any suggestions on how to overcome the buy American and support the big three objections? Yeah, uh, you know. Look, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta find that part of the marketplace that wants your product. If they're shopping Nissan but saying this, they're not that loyal. <laughs> you know, it's like the guy in church. He spends an hour in church hearing what he shouldn't do, and then the next, the next thing you know, he's being tempted, you know, by being in the wrong places. So, just because somebody says I'm the loyal American, I want it built in America, the reality is those big three aren't built in America. So you just need to get all the data about where these automobiles are built. I understand the objection he's getting. You just need to prepare yourself for it. Probably just acknowledge it. It's probably more a complaint than it is an objection because he, he is shopping your store. And you know, I think, I think some things also transcend being built in America. Great customer service, for instance, is one of those things. And I think people are going to buy from you if they like you, right Grant? Absolutely. Well, there you go. Okay, so um, we do want to wrap this up because we are very over time. And Grant, you've been so generous with your time, of course. Uh, I do want to get in at least maybe a couple more of these questions from the audience if you're game. Yeah, sure. Okay. And you know, also, if I can get a list of the questions, I'm happy to send an email and answer from my office. Ah, well, there you have it. Okay, that would be great, too. Um, uh, Ernie wrote in, I do automotive direct mail and our creative and responses are considered very good, but how can I help better integrate the campaigns with the dealership staff? So this goes back to uh, training the staff on how to uh, be more in touch with all of the advertising that's going on. And this is from the advertiser's perspective, so do you have any advice on how Ernie can help prepare the staff better? Ernie, we, we are actually creating uh, videos for every direct mail campaign you run. So you name the program, and when we drop the direct mail, we're, we've worked with about six different direct mail houses for every type of ad campaign that you can push, so that when we know that ad is being dropped on Thursday, on Monday, your store, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, everybody from sales 
to the receptionist is actually getting video delivered to their phone, their pad, or their computer that they have to watch and test out on so that they're certified to actually be able to handle a customer when traffic starts calling and walking into your dealership on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we're actually building those modules right now. We have the first one built, which is a direct mail campaign, and it's an exchange or trade-in campaign or $4,000 over or Kelly Blue Book or Black Book or whatever you're calling your campaign. They're all basically the same. It's the preparation of the staff that's not happening. So we'd love to show you that because it, it, it is exactly what you're talking about. Thank you so much. And I want to end on this one last question that came in from Mike. It's a very good question, actually. Grant, when you started off your career, was there any big influences in building your social powerhouse? Grant, that's a great question. Who was your Grant Cardone? <laughs> look, look, I, look, so that everybody knows, I, I was a terrible salesperson. I got, I got in the car business when I was 23 years old. I didn't get in the car business because I wanted to. I couldn't get a job in accounting. I couldn't get what I, I called at that time a respectful job. So I had, I had to get in car sales, and I didn't want to. I'll tell you right now, my friends were laughing at me. Oh, my God, a car salesman. My mom even like, you're a car salesman? Not really. Look, it's the only job I could get. And I spent two years jacking around with it, not committed, not focused, didn't train, didn't read, and I became an average salesperson up one month, down the next. And when I was 25 years old, I made a decision to turn my situation around. And my finances were terrible, couldn't keep a credit card, was scared I was going to lose my job, didn't have any money. And somebody gave me a, a cassette tape from a guy named Jackie Cooper, and that was the first thing that I learned. And then I went and got the book uh, Think and Grow Rich. And then I got uh, Og Mandino, the greatest salesman in the world. And then I got turned on to this guy that did uh, insurance sales. Man, I forget his name now. But I started, I smothered myself, literally immerse myself in training and education so that I watch video before I left my house in the morning. I listen to cassette tapes on the way to work because that's what they were back then. During the day I role played and on the way home I listened to audio cassettes again and then I watched a video at 7 or 8 o'clock at night to recap my day. And I, 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 became, I reached the top 1% of all salespeople in the country on my production. I was averaging 30 plus cars a month. That's not a lot to some of you. Uh, but I was in Lake Charles, Louisiana, a small town, not a big city. And when I was 30 years old, I made a decision that I wanted to become like those people and help others. There was a salesperson that flew in from Richmond, Virginia, or Washington, D.C. yesterday to visit with me. I convinced him three years ago to do the same thing that I did when I was 25. He's going to make $310,000 selling cars this year in a BMW store in Washington, D.C. He's not a manager. He's not a finance guy. He sells 30-plus cars every month. He sold 58 in December. The guy's a killer. And the reason he's a killer is because he's well-trained, well-prepared, and he's completely committed to sales as a solution, that he wants to be the best in his industry. And that's, that's what I'd like to end on, to tell everybody, look, make a commitment to greatness. Make a commitment to, to being the best in the industry, not the best in your store. And, you know, condemn everything, every concept that's average, condemn it. Everything that's about competition, push it away and make a decision to be great so you can take care of yourself and your family and your future and you become extremely valuable not just to the car business but to the entire economy and, and you will do better at your job you'll feel better about yourself and you're going to be you're going to be extremely effective with your customer because they're going to see it on you Grant thank you so much for being here today that was incredible and and very very motivating so Everyone out there in webinar land, I want to remind all of you, we did record this fantastic presentation. And if you still have answers for Grant, his contact information is up on the screen right now. I would say take advantage of that, contact his office, 
and see if you can get some personal attention from the very best that there is out there. And of course, I want to remind the audience that a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is also going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. Please share it with friends and colleagues. And it's also going to be posted online within 24 hours. All you have to do is go to dealeron.com slash webinars. And you can view our upcoming webinar schedule and access all of our past webinars. And don't forget, very important, this webinar is going to conclude in just another minute or two. Please, you're going to be receiving a short survey. Please fill it out. We're always looking for great feedback from our audience. We want to know what you thought about Grant's presentation today. So please fill it out. We're also going to randomly select a couple of the people from all the completed surveys to also win some prizes. So there's just no downside. Let us know what you think. It's always very important. Grant, thank you so much. Thank you so much, and thank everybody. Man, go out this week. My birthday's today. The best birthday present you can give me is close a deal today and make sure you make all the money because you, every one of you, deserves to make a lot of money. I agree with that. Okay. Before you go, I want to let you know, invitations are going to be going out tomorrow for our next webinar. Hopefully you can put it forward one more slide. There you go. Seven priceless tips that guarantee huge accessories profits with David Stringer. He's the president of Insignia Group. So if you aren't currently offering vehicle personalization, well, two things are certain. One, you're walking away from a whole lot of money. And two, your customers are going to spend their money elsewhere. So in this one-hour webinar, you will learn seven priceless tips on how to structure a successful accessories profit center that will immediately increase customer loyalty and dramatically improve your bottom line. So if you think it's time you got a bigger slice of the $30 billion accessories industry pie, well then this is one webinar you simply can't afford to miss. It's going to be another fabulous presentation by your friends at DealerOn. And don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held every Thursday, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And we have some great webinar subjects planned for this year. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, please contact me directly. Again, my name is Eliana Raggio. I love hearing from you. Track me down online or email me at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. And we hope to see you all on a future webinar in our continuing education series. Have yourselves a good one. Take care.